Um, our next speaker is Eric. Now, um, Eric Judson is from Payday, and it's an organization, a network of men who uh, work with and are supportive of my organization that Teresa referred to, the Global Women's Strike. And he will tell you about the support work that those men are doing for those of us inside. Okay, yeah, all right, thank you, Selma. Um, uh, yeah, I mean, part of our work is, um, is really to try to find ways of crossing divisions between different sectors of prisoners. Um, and I really appreciate Reverend Pinkney's I introduction, and really I think everyone on the panel's focus on trying to, to really break down the divisions among us and between those outside and inside. Um, we try to cross national divisions, first of all, um, try, to, try to join together the struggles of hunger strikers in California with hunger strikers in Palestine. Um, uh, we try to cross divisions between so-called political and non-political prisoners. And particularly, we want to bring together the movement of soldiers that are refusing to kill, uh, whistleblowers and veterans, um, with the movement of prisoners and their families and formerly incarcerated people. Um, and our, initially when we began this campaign, we really worked a lot with refuseniks, with military refusers, and we have a website, refusingtokill.net, which tries to bring that together. But we've really expanded that to refusing to kill or be killed. Um, and we really take the principle of taking our leadership um, from people on the front lines. Um, you know, we agree with like the, what the Global Women's Strike says, invest in caring, not killing. Um, we really learn how to move and start to reclaim the military and prison budgets from, you know, that steal so much of our resources and our time um, from those, those who are refusing. Um, so I wanted to speak just a little bit about this in relation to two current refuseniks um, who urgently need your support, um, but also to speak a bit about the hunger strikes in Palestine. Um, and before I do that, I just wanted to, to say one of our experiences working on these campaigns as a network of men has been that it's really been the women, the mothers, the partners, the sisters, um, who um, really carry the day-to-day -day work of campaigning when their loved ones can't speak out. Um, from prison and and are really you know the central people in their campaigns okay. and and uh, we feel as part of our responsibility to really acknowledge the leadership of women in these struggles mm -hmm. um, so the first uh, man I want to speak about is um, as people probably know about Bradley Manning he's a, a, a young gay man who was in the military um, he was a military intelligence private um, He's alleged to have, have leaked um, many thousands of documents um, uh, detailing uh, U.S. Uh, crimes around the world. Um, most famously, the collateral murder video, I think people may have seen, which shows uh, deliberate murder by helicopter, from the helicopter of, se of several Reuters journalists and, and children. Um, uh, He's, he's a, it's, a, it's a hugely important case um, for all of us in the movement because these rev, rev, revelations that WikiLeaks brought about had a, had a, you know, a huge effect on, uh, in the Arab world in bringing about the revolutions that happened in last spring and in turn became um, you know, central to the Occupy movement in this country and other countries. Um, so, um, I, just to give you an update about his situation, he, he, he faces a court-martial, uh, probably in August. Um, he's facing charges up to life in prison. Um, he had a hearing in the past two days in Virginia. Um, his lawyer's calling for dismissal of all charges against him. He, um, uh, the military has blocked almost all of the defense witnesses, and it's really become a show trial. And, um, and you know, prejudice, first of all, by, by, by Obama, who publicly, you know, said that he was guilty, that he broke the law. 
Yes. Um, so there's been uh, a lot of campaigning internationally we've been doing on this. Um, there's a, just to mention, there's an Icelandic parliamentarian who nominated Bradley for the Nobel Peace Prize, wow. and we want to get people's support for that. Mm. Lawmakers in this country and other countries, other prominent people. Um, but I think Bradley's case also relates to the rest of the prisoner movement because for nine months he was held in solitary confinement, um, tortured, forced to sleep naked, um, all the things that um, you know people who are in the prison movement know happen all the time. Um, but you know his case really shines a light on it because it, it has such prominence, and um, he actually won. He, you know, he last last year he was a, a, able to be moved out of solitary confinement, um, which was a great victory. And so I think people are starting to make those connections. In fact, um, last month there was a, a day of action in several U.S. cities, Occupy for Prisoners, in which. Um, Bradley Manning was one of the people that was, um, you know, in addition to the 25,000 other people plus in this country who are in solitary confinement. Um, so people are starting to make those connections. Um, we also, sh I should say, work with um, Queer Strike, which is a, a LGBT group within the Global Women's Strike, um, and, and, and try to um, gather support from the uh, gay and lesbian movement for uh, Bradley. Um, and just to say, I mean, I think all the work that we do outside in support of those inside is really crucial. And we've seen that, you know, first of all, we protect them by writing to them and campaigning and doing things so that authorities really can't afford to continue <coughs> torturing them. Um, but we've seen in the cases of a lot of refuseniks, when there's a public campaign, the sentences go down, and even if they're, you know, even, but up to including Lieutenant Aaron Rattata, who was the first army officer to refuse to go to Iraq, who you know, had such international support that his court martial fell apart, and uh, in fact, he was he didn't serve any time in prison. So, you know, those are things that are really possible because of the outside pressure, um, and very important. So. The other person I wanted to, to the uh, case I wanted to raise, you may not know about, his name is Halil Sabda. He's a, he's a Kurdish man in Turkey. He's, a, he's one of the most prominent conscientious objectors in Turkey, where that's, um, you know, it's, a, you, you, it's required that you serve in, in the military. He's uh, been in prison and been tortured for that. We campaigned with him back in 2008 to get him out of the military. But he's facing jail time again for making public statements in support of Israeli refuseniks. He, he supported several Israeli refuseniks who refused to invade Lebanon in 2006. Um, and there's a law in Turkey where it says if you speak out, you know, encourage military refusal, then you go to jail. And this was, they applied to him, you know, speaking out against um, the, the Zionists in, in Israel. Um, so um, it's a very important case. Uh, we have some flyers about it um, on the table. Um, but um, yes, so you should take, take that and, and learn more about it. Um, and just to say then about the Palestinian hunger strikes, um, there's a woman, uh, Hana Shalabi now, in who's on her 31st day of a hunger strike <clears throat> in a young Palestinian woman. Um, and she's really taking the hunger strike for all, all prisoners held in administrative detention and really making the point of not distinguishing political prisoners from non-political. Very good. Um, and um, <clears throat> just recently there was another prisoner, Kadir Anan, who was on hunger strike for 66 days. Um, and I. I believe in, in April, the Palestinian prisoners will begin the largest open hunger strike in all Israeli jails to pressure the Israeli prison authority to ending solitary imprisonment, improper medical care, restrictions imposed on family visits, and administrative detentions. So this is a movement that's coming up um, that we should all know about. Um, and there's quite a lot of um, 
children in prison as well in, in, in Palestine, um, you know, arrested from their family home in pre-dawn hours by soldiers. You know, child can be painfully bound and blindfolded and bundled in the back of a military vehicle, denied access to a lawyer, visits from their families. Um, they're, you know, slapped, kicked, um, all kinds of psychological threats. Um, this is all, you know, all happening. So anyway, I'll end there. Mm. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. So now, what, what we're talking about, we're talking about the situation of women, we're talking about the individuals inside, we're talking about a movement to prevent more prisons from being built, and in fact there's a movement against prisons altogether and now we're talking about and the struggle inside of the prisons the prisoners giving leadership to every movement and on the other hand we're now talking also about an international movement of prisoners and against the imprisonment of our people whoever they happen to be in any particular country